What's going on in Myanmar? Hundreds of thousands of locals are crowding the streets. Bodybuilders are protesting the military. The nation's leader, a Nobel Peace Prize winner, has been arrested for walkie-talkies. And it all started with this. On Monday the 1st of Feb, while filming her morning routine, this instructor accidentally captured the beginnings of a military coup. You see those vehicles in the background? They're actually on their way to arrest political leaders and take control of the government. The military announced a one-year state of emergency and that power would be handed over to this guy, Military General Min Aung Hlaing. Soldiers took to the streets. Internet services were cut in large parts of the country. Social media platforms were blocked. And in some places, curfews were introduced and gatherings of more than five people were banned. So why is all of this happening? The military says that the country's elections held in last November were rigged and that there were signs of terrible fraud, even though they haven't been able to produce any credible evidence. Many aren't buying it and say this is just a power grab by the military. This outrageous assault on uh, the people of Myanmar uh, by the military uh, cannot be allowed to, to stand. Inside the country, there have been widespread protests and locals have found some creative ways to get their messages across. We've seen people banging pots and pans, singing in the streets, drop it, drop it, drop it and even bodybuilders taking their shirts off. The reasoning behind some of the political arrests has been questioned too. Myanmar's leader Aung San Suu Kyi has been accused of illegally importing communications equipment into the country because six walkie-talkies were found at her home. If you think that sounds like a strange reason to arrest the leader of your country, you're not alone. There's little doubt that the game plan is to try and silence Aung San Suu Kyi to prevent her having a political future in the country and to prevent her having any influence on future elections. All in all, it's a pretty complex situation. So to get a better understanding of what is actually going on, you need to know a bit about Myanmar's complicated history with democracy and the fact that this isn't the first time that the military seized power. Myanmar, or as it was known back then, Burma, spent 124 years under British rule. In the years after World War II, the country finally gained its independence as the Union of Burma. Unfortunately, there was unrest and fighting between the many different ethnic and cultural groups that make up the country. And in 1962, the military staged a coup, scrapped Burma's constitution, and created a military junta. What followed was a one-party state, headed by the BSPP. It wasn't until 1988 that the BSPP had its power truly challenged by a nationwide protest movement. Started by students, the movement spread to hundreds of thousands of protesters, and Aung San Suu Kyi emerged as a leading voice. Aung San Suu Kyi is the daughter of Aung San, known as the father of the nation and a key player in the push for independence from British rule. However, within a few months, the protests were crushed, thousands of people were killed, and the military once again seized power. Aung San Suu Kyi was placed under house arrest, where she remained for 15 years. During that time, though, she still did continue to push for change, with her political party, the National League for Democracy, eventually earning a Nobel Peace Prize in 1991. It wasn't until the late 2000s that the military announced it was going to start moving towards a more democratic system of government. However, the 2010 election was surrounded by accusations of interference and fraud. The election was actually boycotted by Aung San Suu Kyi's NLD, and perhaps unsurprisingly, the military was replaced by a pro-military party called the USDP. So not exactly the open and free elections everyone had been hoping for. They were in charge between 2011 and 2015. During that time, the military still you know, effectively controlled the country. It wasn't until 2015 that Myanmar actually held its first free and open elections, and the NLD won in a landslide. The constitution actually blocked Aung San Suu Kyi from becoming president because she has kids who are citizens of another country, so she had to settle for the title of state councillor, but was still recognised by pretty much everyone as Myanmar's actual leader. However, even with such a big share of the vote, the NLD still had to deal with the military having a lot of political power. The military only agreed to share power because the new constitution guaranteed that they'd keep control over lots of key areas. Plus, they would also be guaranteed 25% of the seats in parliament, no matter what. The military has basically used their control of the parliament to sort of block reforms and also sort of, you know, they still maintain control over defence and immigration and also the judiciary as well. 
And this brings us to some of the actual reasons why the military may have staged this coup. For years now, Aung San Suu Kyi has been talking about removing the military from parliament and taking away their political power. Winning by such a huge margin in the election put her and the NLD closer to that goal than ever before. Not only that, the current military leader and the guy who is now in charge of the entire country has been pretty open about wanting to be president. Um, the military was not happy with the outcome of the elections. The initial hope of the commander in chief was that uh, his, the military backed political party would potentially get up to a third of seats and if so, he would potentially have become president. According to the experts, it's also about protecting himself from the things that he did in his role as military leader. He's been called one of the most wanted men on the planet for his role in the brutal crackdown of the Rohingya people in Myanmar, a Muslim minority group that mostly lives in the Rakhine region. Over the past 10 years he's been in charge of the military, they've reportedly targeted and killed thousands of Rohingya people and burnt more than 200 of their villages to the ground, resulting in hundreds of thousands more fleeing across the border to Bangladesh. Without the military holding political power or the leader of the country protecting him, he would be open to some serious consequences for his actions. It's important to note that the biggest recent military crackdown actually happened in 2017, while Aung San Suu Kyi was in power. She faced a lot of international criticism for not standing up to the military's treatment of the Rohingya people, although she is still incredibly popular within Myanmar. So, what happens next? Tension between the military and protesters has been growing. Security forces have opened fire on citizens. Armoured vehicles have been rolling into major cities. And the military has been cutting off the internet again as it tries to squash the protests. Aung San Suu Kyi has also been charged with another crime, breaking the country's natural disaster law, which will allow the military to keep her detained for longer. Police are also said to be looking for famous activists and protest leaders, although there have been some cases of police breaking ranks to join the protest movement. Plus, the pressure from the international community has been getting louder. The military must relinquish power it seized and demonstrate respect for the will of the people of Burma. I'm announcing a series of, a series of actions that are, we're taking to begin imposing consequences on the leaders of the coup. With both the military and protesters looking like they won't be backing down anytime soon, we'll just have to wait and see what happens next, and whether Myanmar can get its long journey to democracy back on track. <laughs>